Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for uh, braving the uh, snow and coming out this morning. So welcome in the, in the name of Jesus, our living Savior. We're reminded that that message of Easter continues to ring on. Uh, it rings on every day of our lives as the people of God uh, because Jesus lives. And today we especially want to focus on the, the truths that God's Word teaches us about all of the implications of that for our lives. So let's begin our worship this morning with the singing of our opening hymn, hymn 150, Christ the Lord is risen today, alleluia. We'll sing at this time the first three stanzas. So God be with you and bless you as we worship him today. We'll just join, join right in right away that the hymn was playing before. Please stand. To guide our worship this morning, we'll, we'll, we will start out on page 38 with the service of the word until we reach that sacrament portion of our worship service. The service of the word. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from earth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all of your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of this forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. If you would turn back to uh, our opening hymn, Jesus or Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. It's hymn 150. Uh, let's sing stanza four.
us pray. O risen Lord, you came to your disciples and took away their fears with your word of peace. Come to us also by word and sacrament and banish our fears with the comforting assurance of your abiding presence. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We hear the word of our Lord for uh, our instruction on today, the second Sunday of Easter, which shows us the, the importance of what Jesus' resurrection really means for our lives. Uh, by the way, all of our scripture lessons are on pages 7 and 8 of this morning's bulletin, if you'd like to follow along. The Old Testament lesson is recorded for us in the book of Joshua. This is in chapter 3, starting here at verse 9. We'll come back to this lesson for our sermon thoughts today. Joshua said to the Israelites, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you, and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. See, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, Choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the ark, the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the ark of the covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away in a town called Adam in the vicinity of vicinity of Zarethan, while the water flowing down to the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. This is the word of our Lord. We'll continue right away with our reading from the New Testament letters. This is Paul's second letter that he wrote to the Christians in the city of Corinth. Uh, this is chapter 2, starting at verse 5. But it's helpful for us to remember that this is his second letter because in the first letter uh, the Apostle Paul uh, in, uh, encouraged the believers in that congregation to to deal with an individual who was living uh, in an open sinful life and uh, his instruction to them was to excommunicate that individual with the intention with the, the hope that this would shock him into repentance. And that's exactly what happened. The, the individual did repent, and now uh, the Apostle Paul gives instruction on forgiving this individual and welcoming him back. I start here then in chapter 2 and verse 5. If anyone has caused grief, he has not so much grieved me as he has grieved all of you, to some extent, not to put it too severely. The punishment inflicted on him by the majority is sufficient for him. Now, instead, you ought to forgive and comfort him so that he will not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. 
I urge you, therefore, to reaffirm your love for him. The reason I wrote you was to see if you would stand the test and be obedient in everything. If you forgive anyone, I also forgive him. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan may not outwit us. For we are not unaware of his schemes. This is the word of the Lord. Let's join together now in singing the verse of the day in song. It's on the middle of page two of this morning's bulletin. stand now for our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is recorded for us by Luke. This is in chapter 11, starting here at verse 29. And here Jesus uh, speaks about the sign of Jonah. And remember what Jesus had said. He used that comparison of Jonah being in the belly of the sea creature for three days. That was a, a picture of Jesus being in the grave for three days before he emerged uh, alive in triumph and victory. And then he goes on and he, and he talks about letting the light of our faith shine. Let, Jesus is the light. We as Christians reflect that light. There's even a song, we often probably call it a, a children's song, uh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And that's what God wants us to do, to let the light of our faith shine. I start here at verse 29. As the crowds increased, Jesus said, this is a wicked generation. It asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites, so also will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And now, one greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now, one greater than Jonah is here. No one lights a lamp and puts it in a place where it will be hidden or under a bowl. Instead, he puts it on its stand so that those who come may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are good, your whole body also is full of light. But when they are bad, your body also is full of darkness. See to it, then, that the light within you is not darkness. Therefore, if your whole body is full of light and no part of it dark, it will be completely lighted as when the light of a lamp shines on you. This is the gospel of our Lord. The congregation may be seated now for our next hymn. It's hymn 166, The Day of Resurrection, hymn 166.
peace to you and power in our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I mentioned, we especially focus on our Old Testament lesson from the book of Joshua, chapter 3. Listen again to just the opening verse or two here. Joshua said to the Israelites, Come here and listen to the word of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you, and then there's that list of those seven uh, nations, of uh, people who are inhabiting the promised land that uh, the people of Israel were going to uh, dispossess of the promised land. Well, this is the word of our Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the name of our resurrected Savior, who triumphed over the power of death and the grave by his resurrection on Easter morning, fellow people of God. It was seven years ago this week now that uh, our family moved back to South Dakota. So it was the spring of 2011. Anything in particular perhaps uh, uh, call, come to mind for you for the spring of 2011? Anybody? Anybody? Well, one, one thing that uh, was uh, pretty big front page news was all of the flooding that happened that year. There was a uh, big snow melt and flooding up in uh, Montana, and especially around the, the Missouri River, you know, up and down for a thousand miles and even more. Uh, those flood waters were, were raging. And I remember as we were moving, uh, Driving up Highway 81, there was one spot where we, we did actually drive through water that was, was going over the road, which was maybe a little bit precarious, but, but it was nothing compared to what hundreds of thousands and even millions of people had to deal with when those, those flood waters, of, especially of the Missouri River, were going far out of its banks. You know, the... Uh, there was, uh, there were farms and, and ranches that were were swamped. There were cities that were inundated. The the highways, even the interstate highways, many of them were were covered, and so people were being evacuated from their homes, uh, and some even some even died. But it impressed upon people the power of those rushing waters. And I'm sure they knew that before, but now many people knew that by firsthand experience. And much the same thing was the case for, for Joshua, as he learned anew, and the people of Israel, as they learned anew about the powers of those rushing waters when, when they came up to the Jordan River, which was at flood stage at that particular time. But even more than that, even more than that, Joshua and the people of Israel were reminded of the, the far greater power of the one who holds all things in the palm of his hand, the Lord God himself. And today, not only did, did the people of, of Israel learn from that, but today we learn from it as well. And so we want to ask the Holy Spirit to, to bless us as we still have the, the songs of Easter echoing in our hearts and our celebration of Jesus' resurrection. And the Word of God today impresses upon us that the living God, the one who is called here twice in just a couple of verses, the Lord of all the earth, the living God is among you. 
And here we're reminded of two things especially. First of all, that, that it is the Lord alone who has won the victory. So Joshua here is relating to the people of Israel what God had told him to, to tell them. And so he says, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out all of those nations, those seven nations that are mentioned here. So here they are. They, remember, they have been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years now. God led them out of the slavery of Egypt under the leadership of Moses, and they've been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, and finally now they're ready to enter into the promised land, uh, ready to cross the Jordan River into the promised land, but the Jordan River is at flood stage and, and far out of its banks. And they were probably all asking, how in the world are we ever going to enter in? How are we going to get across this raging river? But the Lord had a message for them. The one who is called the Lord of all the earth he was going to make a way. And so uh, he gave this instruction that the Ark of the Covenant was going to lead the way. I think I remember, you might have, I, I think we might have had a, a picture of the Ark of the Covenant uh, posted as you, as you came in. Maybe you can see it here. But the Ark of the Covenant was that, and not a big thing, but, you know, a, a box kind of a rectangular box like this, and it had the poles that were went through loops, and that's how the priests would carry it. Um, inside, of course, was things like the, the tablets of stone that God had written the Ten Commandments on, uh, things like that. Uh, on the top are these two images of angels, all gold-covered, of course, and in the middle, uh, between the two uh, angel images was what's often called the mercy seat or the atonement cover. Uh, and that's where the, that glory cloud of God's presence so often showed itself. God saying, I'm here, I'm with you, I am with my people. So the, the priests were leading the way and they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And as soon, as soon as their feet touched the water, this raging river, flood stage, the water stopped. The waters piled up on the one side and they went, went flowing down on the other side. And the people of Israel were able to pass through on dry ground. And remember, we're probably talking about a couple million people well, together with all their, their flocks and their herds and, and the, all of their worldly possessions that they're carrying along now. So this was no small thing. God was making a show of his power and saying, I am with my people. And he allows them to enter into the promised land. And this is just a preview of what's to come. God is saying, I'm doing this by myself. You're not participating. You're just going across. I'm the one who's opening the way and enabling you to do that. And that's a preview of what's going to happen with the conquest of the promised land. They're going to go up, up against the, the big powerful city, probably the most powerful city, uh, of Jericho, the walled city, God's going to show there too. I'm the one who's fighting for you. I am really doing this myself. And really, that's what happened on Easter morning too, wasn't it? Jesus was saying, I am doing this myself. On Good Friday, when he died on the cross, he did it alone. He paid for the sins of all of the world. Nobody was helping him. Nobody was assisting him. Jesus was doing that all by himself. He was, was redeeming the world all by himself. And, and his resurrection from the grave on Easter morning was proof positive that that really is the case. Redemption has been won. 
And Jesus has won the victory from beginning to end, and he has done it all himself. He alone has won the victory. And that's an important message for every one of us. It's essentially what God was saying to the people of Israel here. The living God is among you. Jesus is our living Lord. But that leads us to the second thing that we especially want to notice here. Not only has Jesus himself won the victory, but that he is with us now with his promise that he gives the victory to us. You know, what, what God was teaching Joshua and the people of Israel here was really all about, we could call it victorious living. God says, I'm with you, I'm going to fight for you, I'm going to take care of you, the victory is already mine, it's just trust me, victorious living. And really that's what God is telling us too, by the fact of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Victorious living, that's what our God gives to us. But oftentimes we really don't feel all that victorious, do we? You know, the Bible tells us that Easter changes everything. But so often we might feel as though there's not really that much different in our lives. You know, it's so easy for us to, to fall back into those same old ruts of giving in to temptations that we've given into in the past. It's so easy for us to, to continue to, to let the sinful nature within us dominate the way we think and, and continue with that me-first kind of living rather than reflecting the love that Jesus has shown to us that he tells us to show to other people. Just think, for example, of our, our two other two scripture lessons for this morning. Our, our epistle, for example, that talked where Paul talked about forgiving this individual who was caught in a sin. And, but he, he was led by the Holy Spirit, led to repentance, and he's teaching about forgiving. But oftentimes we struggle with that, don't we? Oftentimes it's, it's difficult for us to forgive others, especially when we, we, we feel like they've, they've wronged us, whether, whether that's real or perceived. Uh, it, it's so easy for us to want to just gather up all of our grudges and just, just hang on to them and carry them close to our heart and, and as soon as some little spark hits that, that we're all ready to, 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 to continue on with those, those grudges that we harbor in our hearts instead of forgiving in Christ-like love. Or you might think of our gospel lesson that talked about, about the light, that Jesus is the light, and that we, as his people, reflect the light of Jesus, our Savior. And he calls us to, to be witnesses for him. But it, it's so often so easy for us to, to be spiritually lazy. And to not be prepared. The Bible tells us, Peter tells us that always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that you have. But, oh, we're so often not so prepared. And we let those opportunities go, go slipping through our fingers that the Lord gives to us. Those opportunities to, to witness for his name. And we know that, that God wants us to, to speak up and, and tell others about the great things that, that Jesus, our Savior, has done for us. But so often there's a fear in our hearts and we're afraid of how people are going to react. 
and that somebody might get upset with us or say something that we don't like or think that, that we're some kind of uh, Jesus freaks or something like that. And so often we just let those opportunities pass by. It's very easy for us to, to feel as though Jesus' resurrection really has not changed us much. Well, the key is the same thing that God told Joshua to say to the people of Israel. Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. Know that the living God is among you. And what the Lord is telling us is to, to go once again to the foot of the cross and to remember what Jesus has done for us in that amazing love that he has shown to us. He's reminding us to go in spirit again to the empty tomb and to know, to know for certain that Jesus did rise from the dead. And that by doing that, he, he won the victory over sin. And he trampled down death. And, and he has defeated the devil. And that in the strength that he gives, we have the victory too. When we have strength, we have power to live for him. So he's inviting us anew to, to come to him, to listen to his word, to come to his holy table and, and be strengthened by the sacrament of, of his body and blood. And to know that there, Jesus gives us power, power to live for him, power to, to witness for his name, power to forgive one another, power to live our lives as the people of God, letting the light of our faith shine. So may the Holy Spirit continue to, to bless us through that powerful means of grace, his gospel in the word and in the sacrament. And may that continue to empower us to live for Jesus, our living Savior, and to know that the living God is among us. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you would please now open your hymnals to page 31 in the front part of the hymnal, there you'll find the Nicene Creed. Let's make confession of our Christian faith uh, with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
The congregation may be seated once again as we now worship our Lord with our offerings. Please stand for prayer. O oh Lord Jesus, our Savior, as we stand in the afterglow of the celebration of your resurrection, Lord, we ask that you would fill us with your grace. Lord, we praise and thank you for that victory which you have won, that victory which you alone have won as you offered yourself as the sacrifice for the sins of the world on the cross and then triumphed in victory with your resurrection from the grave, winning the victory over sin, death, and the devil for us. Lord, continue to be with us and continue to empower us through your gospel and word and sacrament. Lord, forgive us for the times when when we have, have failed to live as your redeemed children. Lord, be with us, with your Holy Spirit, working through the message of your gospel. Lord, strengthen our faith in you and strengthen us so that we might live to the glory of your name. And Lord, confident of your mercies, we also bring you our special prayers. Lord, we pray for... Uh, those dealing with health issues, we ask for your blessings on Mr. Ron, Ron Schmidt, who remains hospitalized in Sioux Falls, uh, Mrs. Eleanor Melberg, who was recently released from the hospital, Pastor Ken Brockmeyer of Brookings, and Travis and Kyla Scott, whose baby is due soon, and uh, she has been diagnosed with gestation diabetes. Lord, we ask that you would look with your love and your favor, especially on these children of yours. Lord, strengthen their trust in you through the power of your gospel message. Lord, we ask that you would also be with those who attend them, uh, those who are, are uh, serving them with medical treatments and things like that. Lord, we ask that you would give them wisdom and, and guidance from your wisdom as they carry these things out. But Lord, we especially ask for your spiritual blessings upon them. Lord, keep them in your loving care. And Lord, we also pray for your blessings on this week's District Pastors Conference in Montana. We ask, Lord, that you would grant safety in the travels and that you would grant spiritual enlightenment through the power of your gospel. And Lord, we also pray for our communicants today. Lord, as we come to your table, we ask for your blessings in this amazing gift which you have given to us of Holy Communion, in which you give us your own very body and blood given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, work powerfully to strengthen our faith and to equip us for service for you. Lord, we bring these prayers and all of our prayers in your name, and we gather all of our petitions in the prayer which you yourself have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue now with our celebration of the Sacrament of Holy Communion as we hear the words that Jesus spoke when he instituted this sacrament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, and said, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Uh, we invite you to, to come forward then for the sacrament of Holy Communion. Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all of your sins. Take body and true blood of our Savior strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. May this true body and true blood of our Savior strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go in
Please stand now for our closing prayer. <coughs> Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive then with peace and joy in your hearts the blessing of our gracious Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated once again for our closing hymn. It is hymn 155, Christ the Lord is Risen Again. Let's sing stanza one and then stanzas five and six. Once again, good morning. Good morning. Sorry, that last hymn seemed to, seemed to be two different tunes on that uh, on the CD there, so it didn't quite fit the second time around. But anyway, uh, good to be with you here today. Thank you again for, for coming out on the snowy day. I'd especially like to, to remind you of uh, uh, things this week, uh, hopefully, well, we'll see what happens, but I am planning to leave uh, very shortly for a conference uh, in Bozeman, Montana, uh, our district, our Dakota, Montana District Pastors Conference. That means there will not be a confirmation class on Wednesday uh, or Bible information class on Thursday. Our Bible information class, though, is underway, and uh, we'll, we'll be meeting a week from Thursday uh, at Peace in Clark again. Uh, but again, there's, there's room for more. If you'd like to join us, you're certainly invited to do that. Uh, one special invitation I'd like to especially highlight here next Sunday afternoon, uh, the youth group uh, from St. Martin's in Watertown, they are hosting a special, uh, it's called Youth and Cybersecurity Presentation. Uh, 
put on, put on by uh, one of the police officers in the Watertown Police Department about uh, young people especially being safe on the internet. So uh, I would urge you to pass on that invita invitation as, as much as you can uh, and urge uh, people to, to join us for that. With that, uh, we wish you the Lord's blessings again. Oh, maybe I should mention one other thing. The, um, the Lutheran Women's Missionary Society Fall Rally is coming up uh, fairly close now. It's scheduled for Saturday, April 21st at Trinity Lutheran in Clear Lake. Uh, and it is the Lutheran Women's Missionary Society. But uh, gentlemen are also invited uh, to, to come to the presentation. Uh, Pastor Paul Yonke, who was with us for our mission festival, uh, is going to be speaking uh, much more extensively about his travels, visiting uh, mission outposts and so forth uh, in various places around the world. And I think, I think he might be uh, overseas right now, in fact. But anyway, uh, you're certainly invited for that, too. With that, uh, God be with you as, uh, again, we walk in the light of our, our living Savior. May uh, uh, we be strengthened to serve him.